Hi there and welcome to Oracle Golden Gate Free. In the next 10 minutes I will give you a tour of our new product and how easy it is to install it and build replication pipelines based on Golden Gate technology. Golden Gate Free has all the features of Golden Gate in a container that just takes minutes to set up and it has an easy to use web user interface based on solution recipes and best of all it's free to use for any purpose. In order to make it free, we had to put in a few restrictions, but it's a great way to get started quickly with Golden Gate and build replication pipelines. For now, we support Oracle Database as source and target, but stay tuned for more database, data lake and streaming support, as well as more solution recipes. We start at the Oracle Container Registry website at container-registry.oracle.com. We have added a Golden Gate category here, and our first entry is Golden Gate Free. When you select it, you get a description of the image and how to use it. You can get started by just copying this one command from the page. There's nothing to download. The command will pull the container image to your local Docker compatible environment and start everything up. The description gives you more details here, such as other parameters you can set, change data volume, and how to obtain and change the administrative password. By default, a random password is generated and shown in the container block. You can also pass a new password through the docker command, which we will do. So let's get started with installing the image. image. I have a standard Oracle Linux 7 environment here with Podman as a docker compatible system pre-installed. The only setup I did was enable the rootless mode. I am pasting the docker command from the website and I'm adding one command line argument to set the password. As I am running this, it pulls the Docker image from the registry, which usually takes about a minute with a good internet connection. After this, the Docker image gets started and you see some diagnostic output where our application server and other components start up. This takes about 20 seconds or so. Eventually, you will see the server started output and this means that you can now continue your work in the Golden Gate Free user interface. We can just point the browser to the host where we run the container, either on HTTP or HTTPS protocol. And then we see the login for the Golden Gate Free user interface. Throughout this demo, I will distinguish between the GG Free recipe driven UI and the standard microservices UI, which you might know from the licensed Golden Gate. And this here is the Golden Gate Free UI. You will see the microservices UI later in this demo on the same container. So let's log in using the credentials we provided in the Docker run command. This is the homepage of the Golden Gate Free UI. The first thing you see are the steps how to create a replication. By first creating database connections to introduce the source and target databases, then create a pipeline between these databases, and then configure and finally run this pipeline. The two main objects in Golden Gate Free are connections and pipelines listed here below. Let's follow the steps and first create connections for both source and target databases. For this demo, I've prepared two Oracle 21C Enterprise Edition databases, both running on Docker containers pulled from OCR and running on this same machine, source on port 1521 and target on port 1621. The important part here is that these databases are not prepared for Golden Gate in any way. They were created pretty much default and I just loaded some sample data schemas on the source database. Now we are entering the connection details for the source database. We're entering host name, port, whether this is a CDB or non-CDB setup, service name, and we set whether we have SysDBA privileges. With these privileges, we will have more automation and abilities to prepare the database for Golden Gate right out of this tool. After providing the sys privileges, we are able to browse and select the PDB, for example. As a next step, we set the Golden Gate admin user in the database. If you don't have such a user, which we don't in this new databases, you will select the add user checkbox so that we'll create one for you. The password you enter will be used to create this user and I'm using the same one we used in the Golden Gate application admin user. In the configuration step, we will prepare the database. The beauty of this step is that it will fully configure the database for Golden Gate for you, a step that has been usually manual. The system knows that you have SysDBA privileges, so you're able to prepare the database. As a first step, we will analyze the database to see which configuration is already there and which needs to be set. As output, you get a SQL script with comprehensive comments that will prepare the database for you. 
it's important that you review the script as it might disrupt your database operations. You can decide to run it yourself or pass it on for further review and execution to your DBA. In our case, we will run it right here. At this point, the script is making changes such as creating users and setting grants and parameters. At the end, you get confirmation that all commands were successful and your database is now prepared. We can now save the connection and see it in the list. We need to repeat the process for the target database. I will take the opportunity to point out a few different options here. We change the connection role to target and we also change the port to 1621 because that's what my target database uses. I'll quickly show how non-container database looks like. You just need one service name, no PDB. And this time I will also leave the sysdba unchecked. The only difference here is that you need to type in the PDB service name yourself. Without sysdba privileges, you can still declare that you need to add the admin user and provide a password. However, on the next page for configuration, you don't have the option to run the analysis yourself because this needs higher privileges. You can download the analysis script and pass it on to your DBA. In our case, we go back and enter the sys privileges here and run analysis like last time. We will accept the script and run it like before, and then we are saving the connection for the fully configured target database. So now that we have created both source and target connections, most of the setup work in this demo is actually done. The next step is to create a pipeline, and this is comparatively easy. We select Create Pipeline in the pipeline list or on the homepage, and we get to the Create Pipeline flow. First, we select a recipe, and in this first release, we provide a recipe for all kinds of replication from one Oracle database to another, with or without initial load. Stay tuned for more recipes in the future. Then we give the pipeline a name, and finally, we select source and target connections. Since we only have one each in this deployment, they're already chosen for us. Next, I am saving the pipeline, and I can review the configuration here. The pipeline is immediately ready to run. By, by default, it will do an initial load, followed by an ongoing replication of all schemas of the chosen database, in this case, a PDB. You can make further changes to this default configuration here in the configuration editor. I can, for example, exclude or include schemas and tables from the source database by checking them or map to other names on the target. It shows here that the source tables are not yet present on the target. I can also see the rules that represent the selected schemas and tables and make changes right here. Finally, I have a choice of options to configure replication further. This includes the most common options of Golden Gate, as well as for initial load, which is using Oracle Data Pump internally. These options are driven by the recipe and shown with additional explanations. So now, after saving the pipeline, we are shown the overview of the pipeline and the two phases that will be executed when the pipeline is run. We start with an initialization phase where Golden Gate processes are created and an initial load is performed to the second phase runtime where the Golden Gate extract and replicate processes are running continuously. So now we have started the pipeline and you will see the completion of each initialization step. What happens here is that the recipe underlying the pipeline is going through each of the Golden Gate setup steps, such as defining credentials in Golden Gate, creating a heartbeat table, setting up the extract and replicate processes with their parameter files, and then kicking off the data pump initial load process. If you know Golden Gate, this is pretty much of interest to you. If not, you can relax because these steps are all automated for you. For each one of these steps, you can also review the logging messages in the context menu. You can also see details of the initial load process, which can usually take more time for a larger database. Finally, when the initial load phase is completed, we are automatically switched to the runtime phase. So as I said, in the runtime phase, we are following the continuous operation of replication from source to target database. This is performed through the extract and replicate processes of Golden Gate. So you can see statistics of these processes in the runtime display, both the latency, timestamp of last operation processed, and the statistics of operation. You can monitor both extract and replica to follow how the capture transactions are applied to the target. We are now starting a steady stream of transactions to the source database, starting with a few inserts and followed with ongoing updates and deletes. 
you will see these transactions in the charts for both extract and replicate. The transactions are first captured, then shortly after applied to the target. In the end, all transactions will be reflected on both sides. The Golden Gate Free UI provides means to monitor and manage your application. But if you want to go a step further, you can jump from this display into the Golden Gate Microservices UI. We provide a direct link to go to the relevant extract and replicate processors. So here you see the extract and replicate display and you can dive into the details of each process. You can see the overall process status, you can see the parameter files and you can see individual statistics. You can also go to the performance metric service and see overall metrics for your processes. Golden Gate Free is still a fully featured Golden Gate, so all of the tools of licensed Golden Gate are also are here. I hope this quick overview of Golden Gate Free was helpful and given you a taste how you can get quickly started with the most performant and reliable real-time data mesh platform.